Today we talked about exponential growth, and it was motivated by this differential equation. We're thinking about some function, and its derivative is proportional to itself. What this means is how fast it's changing is some constant times how big it is. We see this a lot. We see this, for instance, with the radioactive decay. However, if I have more of a substance, I have more of it decaying, so it's changing faster, it's decreasing faster. We also see this with interest on a bank account. If you have more money, you make more money. And later on, we'll see this with population. The more bacteria you have, the more bacteria babies they make, so the faster your population is changing. The solution to this differential equation is q of t is some constant times e to the kt. We can check that this satisfies the differential equation. If I differentiate it, the constant hangs out. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, but this is a chain rule. I have to chain, and this is just c times q. So if I have q of t is some constant times e to the kt, then it fulfills this equation. And actually, this is the only function that fulfills this equation. Whenever I have a function such that its derivative is a constant times itself, it's going to look like this function in red. We talked about how this function governs how much of a radioactive isotope you have. Suppose you have some amount of a radioactive substance. You have 100 milligrams of some isotope at some time. And then one day later, you only have 92 milligrams of that isotope. Let's say that 10 milligrams of that isotope is a safe amount. Say we have some contaminated room and it's at 10 times the safe level. We want to know when can we go back in the room again? When is it going to be safe? Well, if we can find C and K, we know the equation of how much of this isotope there is, so we just set it equal to 10 and solve for T. Now remember C, if I plug in 0 to Q of T, I get Q of 0 is C times 1, which is C. So remember that C is our initial quantity. C is always going to be Q of 0. So in this case, I know that Q of T is 100 e to the kt, where we're measuring this in milligrams. But I know something else too. Because I took a measurement at day 1, I know that q of 1, which is 100 e to the k times 1, I know that's 92. So that means that e to the k is 92 divided by 100, or 0.92. Now, if I wanted, I could solve for k now. I could say that k is the natural log of 0.92. That's totally fine, but it's also not necessary. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that qt is 100. Well, e to the kt, that's just e to the k to the t. So I can write this as 100. I know that e to the k is 0 0.92 raised to the t. OK, so now all I have to do is set this equal to 10 and see what that gives me. So I set 100, 0 0.92 to the t equal to 10. Divide both sides by 100, 0 0.92 to the t is 1 over 10. Now I want to solve for t and it's in an exponent. So to get it down, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. You could also take the natural log of, uh, sorry, you could also take the log base 0.92 of both sides. Both ways are fine. Remember that my log rule says I can bring down this power as an exponent. And since 1 over 10 is just 10 to the minus 1, I can write this as minus log 10, just to make things a little easier to myself. And so that means that the time at which it's safe is minus log 10 divided by log of 0 0.92. And if you plug that into a calculator, that's about equal to 27.6, and we were measuring this in days. So in a little bit under a month, should be safe to go back to your room.